Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to uh, Progressive Discussions Podcast. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I have a very special guest. Of course, you've seen him before, the one and only, the evangelist, can create with something very important to say. Ken, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. And... Uh, it's all yours. Okay. Uh, the study we're going to do uh, today is uh, pressures in life of being a Christian. But uh, before we get into that, I'd just like to say a couple things. That we know we're in the year 2015. And we as believers are going to go through trials and tribulations. We can't get caught up with the world and we can't get caught up with the world system. Because there's too much of us that are getting caught up with these things and it takes our eyes off of Christ. So we also got to know that we are going to go through these trials and tribulations and the pressures of life. Because some people will ask, why does God let these things go on in my life? Well, because sometimes we get too comfortable in our comfort zone. And when we do this, we take our eyes off of Christ. So God has to lure us in back, slowly, <clears throat> bring us back to him. So he makes these trials and these tribulations and storms uh, a testing for us that we have to go through. Because when we do go through these, this brings us closer back to Christ. Because uh, there's too many of us, we're taking things for granted when it comes to these things. You can be uh, doing really good. You have money, your job, you could have your security, your friends. And, you know, one time you could have been out there really pushing for Christ, being a witness for Christ, growing in Christ. But then the pressure gets big. And this is when the devil comes and he starts to bombard you because he does not want the message of salvation to be given out to people. And you as an ambassador for Christ, you have the job to do to do that. So he'll come and he'll bombard you with your past, what you like to do in your past. Could have been the drugs, could have been the alcohol, could have been if you're a man, womanizing, could be the money, could be material things, could be sports. So when he comes in, he attacks you in these different directions. He wants you to get your eyes off of Christ. And slowly, when you fall back into the world, it's a shame, but this is what happens. Because you see, it's getting too hot for you and you can't deal with these pressures. So now what God has to do is he'll let you go and he'll let you go do your, your thing. Just like the prodigal son that went out there and he wanted to experience life. So he went out there on his own and he did what he had to do. But in the end, he became broke and he went back to his father. And his father welcomed him back. This is what God does in our life. He'll let you go out there. He'll let you experience things. But as a child of God, he's going to convict you. And when he does convict you, that's going to bring you closer back to Christ. So we go through these trials and we go through these tribulations and we go through these storms so God can teach us. Now we have believers who are real strong in Christ. And they're going through a lot of heavier things. But they're counting it all joy. They got their eyes on Christ. They depend on Christ. He takes care of their needs. Because a lot of these preachers out there that are preaching, they're preaching a message of prosperity and gain. There's nothing wrong with that when you have your priorities right and you got your eyes on Christ. Because these blessings that come your way, you're going to go out and do the Lord's work. But these preachers get you off guard. You're saying God's going to give you this. He's going to give you that. Okay. It does come your way. It doesn't come your way. You can get frustrated and you're taking your eyes off of Christ. They're putting you in a situation to bring you back into the world. And I'm sorry to say is that these people that preach this, really, you got to get your act together. Because even when it comes to a preacher or a pastor, I look at a pastor as somebody who's the head of the flock. But he also has to be 
a teacher that teaches you the word of God. Now, for myself, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. Some say, well, you, you sound like a preacher. That's fine. I'm an evangelist. An evangelist is somebody who goes out and is a witness for Christ. And also can go out and tell people where the future lies. Because you are in God's word, the Bible. So what I do is I teach the word of God, okay? Because my pastor has taught me how to study the word. And to me, that's what a pastor should do. Not only look over the flock and pray for them and watch out over them. And even if they come in and they have problems, they can go into the Bible. They can pray and see if they can solve the problems in the people in the body of Christ. But they're also supposed to be a teacher. They're supposed to teach you the word. A lot of these preachers you see on TV, they run around up on stage. And to me, that becomes a show. Where's the teaching? Where's the studying? You got to study the word. You have to study the Bible. That's growth because God will show you things in the word if you are under a good Bible believing teacher. And I thank God that my pastor taught me how to rightly divide the word of truth because we're under God's grace today. And he taught me how to study the word and take it one verse at a time. So when I listen to different preachers on the radio or TV, I can know who is preaching a good message or somebody who's just sugarcoating it. And with somebody who's sugarcoating it, meaning the water and the message down for today under grace, I don't listen to them. So I like to listen to solid, good teaching from good, solid pastors. So I just wanted to tell you about that. And now we're going to get into the pressures of being a Christian. And you can find that in Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> so now since we have been made right in God's sight by faith in his promise, we can have real peace with him because of what Christ our Lord Jesus has done for us. So you see right there, we have peace with God because of what Christ did for us at the cross. So when you're going through trials and you're going through tribulations and you're going through storms, you have peace with God because the word just said it. Why? Because what Christ did for us. So I don't worry about tomorrow and I don't worry about food. I don't worry about drink and what tomorrow is going to bring. Because the Bible says if God clothes the grass and he takes care of the birds, he surely is going to take care of me and he's surely going to take care of you. So we have the peace of God because of what Christ did for us. That security when you know what your salvation means to you. Because that's where another part comes in where people are confused when it comes to their salvation. Yeah, they're saved, but they truly don't understand what that means. See, when you pray and you ask God for forgiveness, my friend taught me, Ken, why are you asking God to forgive you when you're forgiven? Why don't you thank him you are forgiven? He says, because when you thank him you are forgiven, then you understand what Christ did for you at the cross. And now your salvation starts to come more into your life like, wow, really? That's what Christ did? <sighs> That's amazing. You see, when I first became saved, I became saved because I didn't want to go to hell. But as I grew and studied the word, I see it more differently. Anybody who rejects Christ, okay, is going to go to hell, the Bible says. That's their choice. So it wasn't going about hell because God don't put nobody in hell. You put yourself in there if you reject Christ. That's what the Bible says, and that's what I believe. Well, anyways, I was growing as a believer, and I was studying the word, and I was under really good, solid stewardship from my pastor i really start to find out that god saves us so he gets the glory in our life 
So how many true believers out there give God the glory? You know, we say it, but if we want to go out and we live the way we want it in the flesh, you can't give God the glory there. And another thing I hear from people, believers, what a good God I serve. That's true. That's very true. But you also got to know that God is an awesome God. See, we, we can't comprehend to that. You can't comprehend how, how awesome that God really is. And once you can understand how awesome he is, that might be a turn event in your life to get on that narrow road and keep your eyes on Christ. But we make excuses. We say, yeah, what a good God I serve. Okay, that's great. But you don't know how awesome he is. You know, people say, oh, you know, uh, I idolize this guy and that girl and an actress and actor and that sports star and that entertainer or I want to be like them. Yeah, I don't like that too. But in my life, I have one idol. That's the Lord. That's it. He's my idol. He's my teacher. He's my mentor. And that's how all Christians should be. But it's sad to say that a, little, a lot of Christians don't think this way. I mean, if you look at our brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering in the foreign countries, look what they're going through. Some are getting bit beheaded, but they're going home with the Lord. Others are locked up, they're in jail. Don't know where the next meal is coming from, don't know where their next drink is coming from. But they're counting it all joy, they're bold. So if they're out there being bold, what about us here in the United States who have a car? Who have a house, who have food, who have drink. You got all the pleasures. You got these blessings. And look, look what we do. We take God's grace for granted. And we can't do that. Even when it comes into marriage, and I know Christians have been divorced. In fact, I know one person may be going through the third marriage, ready to look for their fourth marriage. Oh, that's okay. God don't want me to be single. Very true, but you're going on looking for your fourth Husband, three strikes and you're out. But what do we do? We take God's grace for granted because we're forgiven. See, we try to use God like he's a genie in the bottle. Rub the bottle. He'll come out and he'll give you what you want. And it don't work like that. You're going to be chastised. You're going to be convicted. And he's going to teach you. I know he has taught me things in my life. He's beating me up in my room, not physically, but spiritually. And it was awakening to me. So these pressures of life are definitely going to come our way. But we got to keep our eyes on Christ. And there's too many of us that go back into the world. And when you go back into the world, you ain't showing light onto people. You ain't being a witness for Christ. And you surely ain't going to edify and build up the body of Christ. Because there's too much in the body of Christ now getting caught up on entertainment. Who's jealous of who? I don't like that person. That person didn't call me. False promises here. Lies. Gossip. We've got to stop that. If Christ forgave us, then we got to forgive one another. You're supposed to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Edify, motivate, and build them up. But do we do that? Some of us do, which is fantastic. Other of us, no, we hold grudges. So if you're holding grudges, that's not going to get you nowhere. And you're not going to grow from that. So we'll get back into the lesson. These are things I just want to teach. And God shows me how to study his word. Because we have to study his word. We can read it. And you think you got it. And it could go to one ear and out the other ear. You got to study and you got to apply. So we're getting back here. The verse over here. You see, our faith has been brought us into this place of highest privileges. Where we now stand. We confidently and joyfully look forward to actually becoming all that God has in mind for us to be. You see, when you became a believer, God intended you to mold and shape you into the image of Christ. 
Doesn't mean you're Christ. Doesn't mean you look like Christ, but you take on the characteristics of Christ, which is love, patient, kindness, long suffering. This is what God saved us to be, to be trophy cake it's for him to unsaved people. So when unsaved people look at us, they see a difference in us. They see a light about us. They start to ask questions, and we can give them the right answers. So when they see this, and they see what is happening in our lives and the changes in our lives, then maybe they can look at this in a way and say, hey, I want to hear more about this, about Christ. So we go, and we give them a little more. We feed them a little more. And then they look at our lives. And they want more, we feed them a little more. Then they finally come to the conclusion to say, wow, Christ is real. I don't want to be separated from him. And there's people who accept Christ. Now, when they accept Christ, they have a job to do, just like you and me have a job to do to get the word out. And then it becomes a domino effect. So God gets the glory. This is what God wants to do in our lives. Oh, and then we got, we can rejoice too when we run into, see, problems and trials for we know that they are good for us. Not to say they're bad. It says they're good for us because God is going to teach us something to draw closer to us. And when he draws closer to us, we draw closer to him. Why do we go through these things? Maybe to go and teach other people down the road who are going through things that you went through. That's a testimony. See, they help us to learn to be patient. And patience develops strength of character in us. And it helps us trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. See, you're going through these things for a reason, because God is doing something in our life. Our faith is going to grow. We have to be patient through these things. But our hope and glory is in Him. And you will know 100% secure that if you leave this world tonight, you're going home with the Lord. That's security in Him. This is the things that God wants to do in our lives. This is what the word says. But how many of us let go and ask God to fill us up and let the Holy Spirit control our lives? Now we get caught up with the TV. Now we get caught up with the internet. Ah, oh, the entertainment. Ah, oh, the sports. Ah, oh, the radio. The movies. The music. The clothes. The fashion, the money, the material things. This is what the devil does. He wants you to take your eyes off of Christ. Whatever it takes, he will do. But he will look at the things in your life that you like to do. And he will keep you there. No. Okay, he will... He will keep you there for what you like to do. I know in my own life, I grew up playing sports. I love sports. But now, being in the Word, studying the Word, and I put a, a sports show on, I watch it, and, but there's like, there's nothing there no more. There's no more excitement there. I turn the channel. I put something else on, and it's like, there's nothing here. So what is happening in my life when it comes to the sports or even the entertainment, I'm being set apart. I'm being pulled away from these things because I'm losing interest in the things I used to watch. And to me, there's nothing there to watch. So this is how God helps us it makes us go through these things to teach us. He'll make you go through these things for a reason, because he's going to teach you some. And he's teaching me a very valuable lesson. And he's showing me 
that when I watch the TV and I get caught up with these things, time is going by. Time is too short. That stuff doesn't matter to me no more. This is what God's teaching me. And hopefully he's teaching you a lesson. It doesn't have to be sports like I like sports. It doesn't have to be entertainment like I used to like entertainment or being a performing artist. Because when I go out and perform, I'm not there for them. I'm not there for me. I'm out there for Christ because he uses me as a tool. And the power of the Holy Spirit controls me. So when I perform, really, it's the power. It's the spirit that takes over my performance. That's what I love doing. But that's for a reason. And that reason is, is to get the word of God out to people. Because if I have people that come up to me, then I witness to them. But God uses me as a tool with the entertainment to reach people. That's why I like doing that. And to me, that's why I'm an entertainer. Okay, so what we're going on here, now we're getting to uh, uh, <clears throat> then what happens, we are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens to us. We know that all is well, for we know how dearly God loves us. And we feel this warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill us, our hearts, with his love. That's what I say. When somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within them because he who's in you is greater than the world. But the problem with Christians is... Each day, we should ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit and to let God control us with the Holy Spirit and turn on the Holy Spirit power and let the Spirit control you. Because when the Spirit is controlling you, then when you leave your house, it's like the joy is all over you. It's overflowing. Your cup is overflowing with joy and when you see a christian that's like radiant and is like wow they look beautiful and the dark will be attracted to that light but if you as a believer are walking in the flesh and you meet somebody that don't know christ and they're in the dark they don't see no light coming from you so they look at you either as a hypocrite or like them but if you are light to them, then they're going to see something different about you. And then they're going to ask questions. So that's why the Holy Spirit was given to us to fill us up, to control us. Because in our own weakness, our flesh, we cannot do it. So if you as a believer are trying to be, depend on your flesh, you're going to fail. Holy Spirit power is in us to control and fill us so he can control our lives because our flesh is too weak and we cannot stand up against the devil. See, your enemy comes and attacks you. You're not dealing with people who don't know Christ. They're just pawns. It's him. It's Satan that comes and bombards you. So the Holy Spirit has to empower you to overcome your flesh, the devil. So we got to let the Holy Spirit control us. And I'll tell you what, when you let the Holy Spirit control you and fill you, wow, what an exciting life. Because I have days that are good. I have days that are bad. But I know when I let the Holy Spirit control me and fill me, that's an exciting day. So at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? This was an exciting day I had with Christ. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down and on anger on you. Don't let the devil have a footstool over you. So basically, really what it means is at the end of the day, can you look and say, 
You know, throughout my day, I gave God the glory. And at the end of the day, giving him the glory, I had victory over Satan for that day. See, you have victory over Satan because of the blood of Christ, which is salvation. But throughout the day, if you live in the flesh, at the, the end of the day, Satan can look at you and say, yeah, but you know what? Today, I had victory over you. So don't give him victory at the end of the day. Give God glory at the end of the day. Because now when you give God glory at the end of the day, and you see what God did in your life for that day. Now you're going into the next day. You pray to the Lord for Christians to be filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Because when they're being filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit through their daily walk of life, then at the end of the day, they had victory over Satan too. So don't get caught up with your flesh and don't think you can do it. Because at the end of the day, the devil can look at your life at the end of the day and say, I had victory over you. And you don't want that to happen in your life. You want, at the end of the day, to give God the glory. And this is where we got to go. And this is the word of God. This is how you study the word. Take it verse by verse. And if you're confused, then just sit back like I do. And ask God, all right, Lord, reveal that to me. I'm a little confused there. All right. The Holy Spirit will start to convict you so that when you get back into his word, it just jumps right out in front of your face and he'll give you the answer. But there's too many of us that we read it and we think we got it and we go on. Nah, it's like you're being bored. When you get in this word, you should have joy getting into this book. You should have a desire to get into this book. You should love this book because God is teaching you his word. God is teaching you about him. Now, if that don't get you excited, me, there's times, oh, yeah, I'll get into the word. I get into the word and I'm being distracted from different directions. Telephone call comes in. Oh, that sports show is coming on. Oh, I don't want to miss that. So I run through it quick. To me, it's like, why even get into it? You got to have a desire. You got to have a joy to get into this book where you're like, I can't wait to get back into the book, to study the book. And I think that's great when you have that attitude. Uh, what happens? We are able to hold our heads high. No matter what happens, knowing that all is well for our soul. For we know how dearly God loves us. And we feel this warm love everywhere within us, the Holy Spirit. When we were utterly helpless flesh with no way of escape. Christ came at just the right time, see, and he died for us sinners. We had no use for him. Even if we were good, we really wouldn't expect anyone to die for us. Though, of course, that might be barely possible. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us. While we were all sinners. And since by his blood he died, all this for us... As sinners, how much more will he do for us now that he has declared us not guilty? Now, we will, he will save us from all of God's wrath to come. You see, the wrath of God is going to be coming on people because they rejected Christ. Now, we as sinners who accepted Christ as our Savior, if that's what Christ did for us at the cross, to get right with God and give God the glory, if he did that for us in time past, what's he doing for us today? He's not going to watch out over you. He's not going to take care of your needs. 
I mean, come on, we got to keep our eyes on Christ. Our security is in Christ. You see, it says in the Bible, okay, we were lost and we needed Christ as our Savior. We weren't looking for him. You know, I had people that came to me to say, oh, you know, I found Jesus Christ back in 1995. I was like, he was never lost. He found you. You can't find Christ. He's not hidden. You look at creation. You, everything God created. All right? People know there's a God. People know there's a creator. All right? It's when you start searching for the truth that God will bring somebody in your life to get to you, to talk to you about Christ. Christ was never lost. He found us. The Bible says he came into this world to seek which was lost. Christ seeked us out. So when I explained this to this young girl, she was really taken back. But she said, you know what? You're right. You're right. I didn't find Christ. He found me where I was at. God takes you where you're at. You can have tattoos all over your body. You can have earrings pierced all over your body. You can be on drugs, you can be on alcohol, you can be in adultery. You can be a homosexual, it don't make a difference. You can be a white beater, you can be in jail, it doesn't make a difference. When you accept Jesus Christ, God takes you as you are. Right there, a lost sinner. And you accept Christ, now you're right with God. Now God slowly starts to change your life around. So if you had all that pure stuff, he starts taking that off of you. Sad to say, he can't take the tattoos off of you. All right? But it say you got long hair. All right? All of a sudden, you're walking around with a nice haircut. Say you were dirty, looking like a bum. All of a sudden, clean clothes are on you. He's cleaning up your life. I had the problems with drugs and drinking. I accepted Christ. God didn't exempt me. Now I'm walking around like I'm a robot. No. He had to mold and shape me. So it was a process I went through. The drugs went. The alcohol went. The cursing of my mouth went. But it took time. That's how he molds and shapes us. Too many Christians accept Christ as their Savior. And they think the next day they're walking around like a holy roller. It don't work like that. So a lot of things that have to be changed in your life he's molding you he's shaping you he's changing you into the image of christ so as time goes on your friends your family people you meet say that guy's changing i can see him changing he was bad with drugs he's not doing drugs no more he had a dirty mouth i don't hear him swear no more he used to drink he don't drink no more and go to the bars. He's changing you as time goes by. You as a believer, are you letting him change you? Or are you still caught up with your flesh and living this lifestyle? And if you're living this lifestyle and you don't see changes in your life, it's truly time to get back right with the Lord. Get into good fellowship with people. Get under a good pastor who's going to teach you how to rightly divide the word of truth because we're under grace today. And it's hard. I know it's hard because there's a lot of churches out there, especially with the mega church that people go to where they get off the message and put the message on self and money. Am I questioning their salvation? No. No. It's not my job to know. But I can get the word out and say where they're watering down the message. And I think for day, today, there's more important things to worry about than material things. Christ is ready to return at any moment, in any day. It can happen 10 minutes from now. Are you ready? See, I look at my thing in life as elements and to me most important thing today as a believer and what we should do is edify the body of christ 
motivate the body of Christ, pray for the body of Christ, watch out over the body of Christ, teach the body of Christ. You grow spiritually as a believer into the image of Christ and to be an ambassador for Christ, to be a witness for Christ. That's what I believe we should be doing today. And if we are doing that, even though we're going to go through trials and we're going to go through tribulations and we're going to have problems, we know this all works together for good because God loves us. So we got to understand this. And this is where we got to grow. And if you're growing in this respect, any minute, any day, you can be gone off this planet. And if you had the judgment seat of Christ, Christ is going to say to you, you did your job. Here's your rewards. When you were in that battle, you were there for me. You went through that trial, that tribulation. Your friends didn't like you. Your family didn't like you, but you stood for me. Well done, faithful servant. You can be saved. Fantastic. Unbelievable. But that's your salvation. But there's stages to grow in your salvation. Now, if you became saved, started off strong, went back to flesh, and all of a sudden you're off this planet, and now you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. You're saved. You're not going to hear from Christ. Well done, faithful servant. He's going to say, what did you do for me? Now, what kind of fruit are you going to show him? What could you show him? You didn't do nothing for him. You made it, but you get no rewards. So we're going to go into one more lesson here, and then we're going to close out. This is something that I got from my pastor that I studied, and we're talking the pressures in life, the tribulations. You see, pressures of a Christian. You got to live for Christ. Minister through your tribulations. You have peace with God through Christ. Welcome by faith. It comes in which we stand. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and pours out his spirit and gives us the Holy Spirit because of Christ. See, your glory will be later in heaven. Now you got the pressures of life. You're going to go through tribulations, money, family, material things. When you're saved, rejoice under these pressures. Give God the glory. Because when you're rejoicing, then you're going through experience, which is going to produce patience, hope, approve from God. Under pressure, witness to people. You will get your re re rewards later. Now you got the pressures in witnessing, in life. But you got your hope in the Lord. And he's coming soon. So serve one another. Because you have a great reward that is waiting in heaven. So I hope this lesson for today, a lot of people start to understand this. This is what we call rightly dividing the word of truth. And we got to start studying his word. Don't read it. See, when you first become a believer, you read the word. But that's why it's important to pray to God that you get under somebody who is going to teach you the word. So you can study the word. So you read it like I did. If you get under a good pastor, he's going to teach you how to study. Because now once you learn how to study and you're growing in Christ, then your desire is going to be more like Christ. So if you read it, that's good. But if you're a believer, 15, 20 years, you should be studying the word. Reading the word is for babies in Christ who just got in the word. But it's a shame you got people 15, 20 years saved, and it's like they're still living in diapers. That's not going nowhere. You're not going to have a joyful life. You're going to be like the world world where people who don't know Christ, they're miserable people. 
that's how you're going to live. Do you want to be a miserable Christian or do you want to be a joyful Christian? But the problem with Christians is like, well, if I'm going to be a joyful Christian, that's great. But you know what? Hey, I'm getting attacked from every angle. I can't take it. We'll put the full armor of God on. He'll teach you. But I know one thing. When you're attacked from every angle, you can look and rejoice and say, but I got security in Christ. So I'm not afraid because if I leave this world, I'm going home to be with Christ. You know, it's like a little kid in the store. They go in the store and the mother says, yeah, you were good. All right, so get what you want. That little kid's happy to run around. Oh, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab that. Or the little kid on Christmas Day underneath the Christmas tree. And the little kid sees all his toys. Oh, man, he can't rejoice. He's rejoicing all day. Is that the attitude you have as a kid? Right? But do you have that same attitude as a believer? Meaning joy, joy in Christ, you're free in Christ. I can run around, I can jump, I can skip because I'm secured in Christ. That's exciting. And that's what I want believers to understand. You should be living an exciting life. You're going to get attacked. You're going to go through pressures. You're going to go through tribulations. You're going to go through storms. But who cares? You're secured in Christ. Live that joyful life. Wake up. Time's too short. It's running out. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to control us. Turn on his power. Watch what God does. It's amazing the things he's doing in my life. But there's pitfalls, and there's trials, and there's tribulations, and there's setbacks, and there's worries. I got to start forgetting about these things and put my eyes on Christ. Because then Christ will open doors. I've done shows in churches, and one lady said to me, well, maybe God don't want you there. Well, you know what? If doors are being slammed in my face outside the church, why is it happening in the body of Christ? God is showing me things. The body's not right with him. Pastors, I performed. Pastors are like, wow, that was great, but then I got to talk to the people for 10 minutes, and the pastor's looking at me like, you ain't coming here no more. I don't want you here. They don't get it. But you see, that's not my problem. So I know God opens doors, but I know one thing. I definitely know another thing. People close doors. They close doors outside. Very true. That happens. But inside the body of Christ, they're closing doors. I think there's something wrong with that picture. Because I know what God gave me. And I know what I'm doing for Christ. Now, if I'm at the judgment seat of Christ, what am I going to do? I'm, at, I'm in front of him. He's either going to say to me, well done, faithful servant, or you blow it. Okay? But that's me. That's my salvation. You're different than me. The Bible says, well, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. I can't be worried about you, but I can pray for you. And I can motivate you. And I can teach you. But then it's your decision. I'm not you. You're not me. So people, in closing, we have to wake up. Because everything's hitting the fan. This economy is ready to collapse. And once it collapses, everybody's going to be equal. There's going to be no money. But then the next thing is the rapture. Where God takes his people off the church. Out of here. The church is gone. The body is gone. But that's another story we could talk about in the future. Okay? So in closing, all I'm saying is God bless the people out there. You better start growing in Christ. And the ones that are growing in Christ, just keep your eyes on Christ. I pray for everybody. And be a witness for Christ. Thank you. Good night. Excellent. Excellent uh, evangelists can create. Thank you. Uh, do you have a story that you, you would like to do well, today? I don't know if I have one on me here. I just might. Yeah, let, maybe. Let me know if you do. Because then I could, I could play in the background my African drum. Let's see if I have one. Like the, like the old days when the beatniks used to do poetry and, and, and play the bomb. Well, I have a quickie here. It's the Wonders of Creation. Okay, hold on for a second. The Wonders of Creation. I, a short sample. Um... 
story by the evangelist can create. Ready? Ready? This is seeing the wonders of creation. See the wonders of creation. They're all in front of you. They're above you. See the birds. They're flying. They're landing in colorful trees. See the grass. It's growing under your feet. Look out. Observe the landscapes of the hills and the mountains. Spread it out for all of us to see. See the wonders of creation. Look out. See above. Blue sky. Splendid white clouds. And underneath. The blue sky is a dark night. Stars are shining. For all of us to see. See the wonders. Of creation. See the beauty of flowers. Growing. Different colors, shapes, and sizes. See the beauty of white snow falling. All on us, purifies the air. See the rain, water in the grass, growing. The plants watered, the fields it filled, filling us, feeding us, all created this greater mind for all mankind to see. See the wonders of creation. Excellent, 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 excellent. Of course, that was me in the background. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching Progressive Discussions podcast um, by Megalife21. I'm your host, James uh, P. Madonna. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Excellent.